In December 1904, the crimes of Johann Hock, a bold new Bluebeard comfort killer and serial bigamist, believed responsible for at least 10 murders and 20 more abandoned and embezzled wives across the U.S., came to the attention of the American. The story was fantastic and hardly required embellishments from the press. Hock was a fascinating rogue with the gentlemanly flair of a Parisian roué. Soft, delicate, and possessing subtle wit and perfect manners, he swindled and scorned numerous middle-aged widows and spinsters during a 20-year marital odyssey through the central United States, New York, and California. The American believed Hock to be an apprentice of H.H. H. Holmes, and its reporters pushed their way into an ongoing police investigation to establish linkage, if only for the purpose of stimulating reader interest and boosting newsstand sales of the paper. 63 miles southeast of Chicago in La Porte, a small city tucked into the fertile farmland of northwest Indiana, a matronly, rather unpleasant-looking Norwegian immigrant woman named Belle Gunnis was marrying and murdering Midwestern bachelors, dispensing with the artificial romantic charm in favor of a more direct approach, an appeal to economic necessity. She lured them into her domain, often from long distances through matrimonial solicitations placed in the Scandinavian newspapers serving the upper Midwest and Great Plains regions. Bell promised a safe and secure home and the prospect of marriage to a good and kind lady who would always look after her prospective suitor. Bell Gunnis fits the common profile of the nesting black widow that does her killing from a fixed location. Hawk was primarily based in Chicago, but he traveled the rails in search of new victims. At one point during his peripatetic career, his journeys took him into northwest Indiana, where he was operating within a scant 20 miles of the Gunnis murder farm. Times were hard. Middle-aged and elderly people without a family to look after them or means of support faced the daunting prospect of poverty in old age if they had not saved enough money to see themselves through until the end. Without the modern safety net of pensions and personal investment plans, working people in those days rarely played the stock market and their assets were usually locked away in passbook savings accounts or hidden inside a mattress. The last chance to maintain a comfortable lifestyle in old age was to marry up. The hope was to connect with a man or woman of means, thus accounting for the widespread popularity of storefront matchmaking agencies and the daily listings of marital solicitations published in the classified sections of the newspapers. The foreign language print media enabled the schemes of Gunnis and Hawk, but it was Hearst's American that influenced and at times dictated the tempo of law enforcement as big city and small town police sought to unravel the complex threads of two dynamic and unusual cases. In an age of social upheaval and tremendous mobility that uprooted and transplanted immigrant populations from the old world to the new, Hawk and Gunnis perfectly understood their victims' fears and apprehensions about living alone in this bewildering new social order. They ruthlessly exploited these concerns by choosing people of their own ethnicity, modestly successful working class individuals from the cities and farms who had shared the hardships of assimilation. German immigrant women were preferred by Hawk, and Norwegian men were targeted by Gunnis. It was the custom in the 19th and early 20th centuries to court and marry only within one's nationality. More than a hundred years later, Johann Hock, for all his pretentious notions of savoir-faire and a self-styled reputation as a sly but charming continental seducer of women, is a completely forgotten figure. However curious and ironic, the coarse and barbaric Belgunis, on the other hand, has been transformed into a folkloric legend of the Great Lakes region, and historians and psychologists must ponder the reasons why.